Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Europe wins the Google battle the IMF warns EU banks need to reduce the size of their debt by £1 trillion Who controls the money controls the world Barroso says the EU could be asked for more money to help Cyprus Plus, plagues of rats are overrunning gardens and playgrounds But what has that got to do with the EU? I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. The European Union's Antitrust Authority just accomplished what the US Federal Trade Commission concluded in January it could not. It partially pried Google Inc's hands off the internet steering wheel. Currently, when a consumer looks for, say, flights on Google, the search engine provides a list of airfares offered by Google's advertisers. Next comes a box dubbed Google Flight Search, listing the major carriers and their prices. Only after that do online travel services appear. A heads up for those conscious about privacy, security and unbiased search results. You might want to take a look at DuckDuckGo.com. This search engine provides unbiased results, does not track what you search and even provides anonymous search facilities providing perhaps a better balance of search results overall. It's certainly one that I use for investigative research. Wake up, wake up, Mr. Draghi. You know that fan in your office? Well, it's going to need a wipe down with some disinfectant. A stark warning that banks across the European Union need to reduce the size of their debts by an astonishing £1 trillion <laughs> was issued by the International Monetary Fund. Once again, monkey see, monkey do. Christine Lagarde has made little mention of any ensuing problems with the kleptocrats pouring money into the banking bailout abyss. All is going to be fine. Just print some more money, raise some more taxes and add some more austerity. Clearly there is not a brain cell between the bunch of them. It seems to me that if we carry on like this, we're all going to hell in a handcart. And I think it's reaching crunch point. You'll recall I reported two weeks ago that unemployment was running at 42%. That is 12 percentage points higher than it was during the Great Depression of the 1930s. The scenario is much the same. The bankers and money changers broke the markets by pumping and dumping a bubble and then saddled the people with the debt. Look, folks, it's time to take a look at history, then read up about the Icelandic pots and pans revolution and tell these jokers to get stuffed. In our letters section, Mayor Amschel Bale Rothschild famously said in 1791, Allow me to issue and control a nation's currency, and I care not who makes its laws. Why stop at controlling a nation's currency if you can control a world currency? The Bank of International Settlements is the central banker's bank and is planning to issue a global currency owned and controlled by the banks. The BIS raison d'etre is to secure banking interests, nothing else. The letter includes a link to an article from Ellen Brown, written in 2009, but has even more relevance today as the US dollar and other currencies come under increasing threat of devaluation through massive oversupply. Falling currencies and rampant inflation will prompt talk of sound money and the need for a coordinated international response. Beware. This will be a manipulated pretext for yet another wealth transfer to banking interests. Now, foreknowledge won't necessarily stop the introduction of a world currency, but the more people who refuse to use it, the less power can be acquired by the banks. Thanks to the team at freecriticalthinking.org for that letter. Now, let's not forget that the Federal Reserve, Bank of England and the European Central Bank are all privately owned. They control all the money. That's a fact that I had not realised until recently. I thought it was the government, i.e. us, that controlled the money. Well, folks, it appears not. Don't stop now, Mario. Keep those presses rolling. Mr Barroso says we need more money to bail out the system. The European Commission has said that member states could be asked to provide additional help for newly bailed out Cyprus, whose economy is set for a dramatic and painful downsizing. Commission head José Manuel Barroso said, however, that an immediate increase in EU funding that is separate from its bailout aid, 
was not possible and Cyprus would have to approach its EU peers first. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Barroso, the euro is dead, deceased, ceased to be, expired and gone to meet its maker. The euro is a late currency. It's a stiff, bereft of life. If you didn't keep bailing it out, it would be pushing up daisies. Join the choir. The euro is an ex-currency. A plague of rats in gardens and playgrounds could be on the way thanks to new health and safety rules that go beyond European Union guidance. The health and safety executive would like the use of so-called second-generation rat poisons restricted to within 16 feet of buildings. The government agency is worried that predators in the countryside, such as foxes and birds of prey, will ingest the two poisons. However, pest control experts are adamant that the poisons are not eaten by other animals if used correctly, and only a fractional amount is ingested even when errors are made. Hmm, interesting. So these experts are saying that predators don't eat the poison, but when they do, it's only a little bit. These sound like the kind of experts the EU could use on its finance committee. Today in our video library, I know I'm repeating myself on this one, but I'm really excited about this latest video we've put together. Trevor Coleman has worked incredibly hard screenwriting this, and personally I think he's done a sterling job. Betrayed looks at the historical development of the European Union as a federal superstate, highlighting the hard evidence that demonstrates how the British people have been deceived and had their voices stifled with regard to the UK's assimilation into a segmented portion of the world, leaving behind its global ties with the Commonwealth for the more restricted single market of the European Union. We would all be delighted to get your feedback on this short film documentary. Did you like it? Would you like us to make more? How can we improve it? Are there other topics you would like us to investigate? Email or comment via YouTube with your opinions and thoughts. I'm Rick Timmis for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the words section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+, links to the community page are below. <laughs>